it is well with my soul. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Has God been good to you this week? If God has been good to you, somebody say amen. amen. If God has really been good to you, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. If God has been really, really, really good to you, somebody just wave your hands and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that God is always good. Amen. amen. Even when we are not good, God is still good. Amen? Amen. 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 want to say thank you to Sister Warmington for the words of introduction. want to thank my brother as well for the song of meditation. I missed the first song. I, I had to do a board meeting before coming here today. My pastor is not at church and I was asked to do a board meeting, so I missed the first song. But whoever did the first song, we want to thank God for them. Brother Ricky Brown, see there and Ricky sing. Anyway. Yeah, Ricky, it sounds like you'll have to sing again. Bring your greetings this morning from the Exchange Seventh-day Adventist Church. Pastor Amiel Somerbell. Pastor Watson, it's actually the last Sabbath for Pastor Watson today. He's moving uh, to Claremont, I gather. So I'm, I'm bringing you greetings. He's still my pastor right now, up to, up to last week this time, or close to this time we were to have a different pastor, and all of that changed. So I don't know if that will change as well. So I'm bringing you greetings from the members there in exchange and you know exchange is no robbery it's a long time it's a long time i haven't seen some of you in exchange hmm? yeah man yeah true true all right I want to welcome those who are visiting as well you are not a member of the church and you're here this morning just raise your hands just raise your hands. Welcome, welcome. I know you would have been welcomed already, but I welcome you as well. And I'm here with my traveling party, less one. So my wife is not here, but my two daughters are here. Those of you who know me know that I hardly go anywhere without them. Amen? Amen. So there's, they're in the middle there. Emily and Amelia, just, just stand so the people can see Amen. you. Amen. All right, so those are the preliminaries. It's a privilege for me to be here again, and we're here this morning to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. The, the caption, the caption for the message today, you make me sick but I love you. What did I say? You make me sick, but I love you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that there is nothing that can separate your love for us despite our shortcomings. And no matter where we go from you, you are still waiting for us. Bless us now as we feast on your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have you ever noticed that sometimes the persons who you love the most give you the most problems? I, 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 it is possible that the younger ones among us, especially those who may not be parents as yet, Sister Pine, may not appreciate what we are saying now. Or they may be the ones who give so much trouble that they know what we are talking about. But it is, it is interesting that 
the, the, the children, the persons to whom we often give most of our love and attention seem to be the one who causes the most disruptions and problems and, and trials and tribulations in our lives. And, and if you talk to a mother about her son, you, you talk to a father about his children, a grandmother, a, a parent, an aunt, an uncle, think about even a, a, a parent who has a, a child in prison who has done something wrong. Come down to even some minor issues at school and in the home. You vex. And, and, and at times you become embarrassed. At times you feel as if you want to take some very drastic action. And then you remember yes. how you love them. Yes. And sometimes you, you, you say in your mind, you say, if, if I never loved this, if it wasn't for this... So, so we, in some sense, children, sometimes you have done some things. You, you are afraid to go and face your parents. You, you don't want them to find out. You, you are already in your mind receiving some, some beating and, and, and some retribution for your actions. And when you get there, when everything is put out on the table, your parents react in such a way that... It's almost that you're sorry you never get the beaten. And you feel this, this love. You feel this acceptance because you know that you have gone wrong. You know that you deserve worse than what you are getting. But they love you. And love, especially in the human context, sometimes tells us that we have to treat things a certain way. Love in the context of God tells us that no matter where we have gone, no matter how bad we have been, no matter how we make God sometimes feel like to vomit, he still loves us. And somebody is sitting and saying, God to vomit? Let's go to the book of Revelation. And we're going to be using, using some passages of scripture to look at the condition of a certain church. And I am praying that by the time we finish searching the scriptures together, that we can make some identification as to which church this could be. Somebody says, you make me sick, but I love you. And if my parents said that to me, maybe I would be wondering which one of the children, but not me. Are you with me? You know, I, I remember wondering, is it my brother? Is it my sister? Because it could have been me. But sometimes as Nathan brought a parable to David, sometimes God has to allow us to see our own condition. Yes. And then you might think to yourself and say, maybe. Or as a certainty, it's me. So let's look at the scripture reading we read. Revelation 3, starting from verse 14. And I hope you're there. I hear some of the leaves turning. And unto the angel of the church of where now? Do what? Right. These things said the what? The true, the faithful and true witness, and the what? Beginning of the creation of God. I know, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I 
Oh, would that thou were called a hack. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, spit you out, vomit out, throw. Because thou sayest I am rich. And Thank you. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and what? Miserable and what? Poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee, verse 18, to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be what now? Rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness doth not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Watch verse 19 now. As many as I want now, I want rebuke and chasten be zealous therefore and repent. Behold I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will what now? Come into him and will sup with him and he with me. 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. The final verse, he, that what now? At an ear to hear what the Spirit says unto the If you read Revelation verse 1, chapter 1, you'll recognize that John is exiled on the Isle of Patmos, giving this vision to write. And verse, when we come to chapter 3, we are looking at the history of God's church throughout time. So seven churches are written to, and each church represents a different period of time in the history of God's church. Now, it, when you go to Daniel 2, Daniel tells us about the history of the world. But Revelation 3, these seven churches speak to the different phases that God's church goes through until the end of time. In other words, we have to be a part of one of these churches. Yes. Oh, uh, the yes sound a little... Uh, uh, so, so I am searching to see if, if we could be that church that came before Laodicea, which was this church of, of brotherly love. As a matter of fact, that church was so lovely in a sense that God didn't even rebuke them. I would want that to be my church. But my friends, when I, when I check the, the stats, I recognize that the period of that church stopped from the 1840s. And from the 1840s until now is only one church left. And the church is written to its name is Laodicea. Now the interesting thing also about this church or these churches is that though they historically represent the church over time, they were actual places. In other words, in those times, there were cities that bore these names. When you look at the, the Laodiceans, they were a very independent city. Rome was in charge of them. So they would pay taxes, tributes to Rome. But they were so independent that there was a point that the city was destroyed. And when they wanted to rebuild the city, they said they didn't want anything from Rome. We have we won our money. This is the real Laodicea now. They used to bring down water 
from the mountains there were some hot springs in the mountains so if you go to to bath in saint thomas or i think milk river i think we have one here in saint Anne's bay where you can go straight into some sections of the earth and the water is hot like a jacuzzi they had some hot springs laodicea up in the hills and they would channel these springs using some they, 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 they didn't have pipe material like we had now so they used stones to make these channels to bring down the water into the city but by the time that hot water traveled along this channel coming into the city when it reached it was neither hot nor cold so Laodicea as a place was the exact thing as Laodicea's condition as a church. And I said, God is so awesome that he ties in actual events with futuristic events. It matches to a T. So he's speaking now to the, to the church in, in Laodicea and he's saying, number one, I know that there, there, there was a song on the radio that said, me know what you're up to. He, he was saying to the church, I know your works. I know what you're doing. I, I know some of the things that you think other people don't see. Or they don't see. I see them. I know. He says you are neither cool nor hot. Now, there are some of us who have our preferences, especially those who have been exposed to really cold conditions. So some of us prefer the cold. Some prefer the hot. Some people say if you're cold, you can put on things to get warm. But when you're hot, you're hot. <laughs> but of course, you can use things to cool you down. Fan, AC, and the like. In a spiritual sense, if you are cold, you're just as good as dead. Because nothing matters, nothing happens. You react to nothing. It's nothing. If you are hot, you're on fire. There's a zeal. You're always going. You, you, you have this burning interest for the work to, to keep moving. If you are lukewarm, and, and, and I am coming to, to something that should allow us to better appreciate what this state of lukewarmness really means. If you are lukewarm, you are in between. You, 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 you're not on fire. And you, you, you're not even dead. We don't know where you are. But watch this. When you want, you, have you gave me a bottle of water, that I should have just brought it for the, for the illustration. I see my, my daughter now push up her mouth and say, yes, I tell you if you carry the water. Yes, you tell me if you carry the water. <laughs> when you want room temperature water to get cold, what do you have to do? <laughs> Put it in the fridge or find some other agent kind of fridge alone. But you find some, you have to add a freezing agent. That's all. When you want room temperature water to get hot, what do you have to do? You have to apply it yeah. huh, to get it hot. So in other words, to move the water from a state of lukewarmness to cold or hot, you have to do something. Yeah. What do you have to do to make it still room temperature? Nothing. Mm. Oh, you never get that. A state of lukewarmness means that there is no action. You no know, do nothing. Because to get cold, you have to get something to get your cold. To get hot, you have to get something to apply the heat. To stay lukewarm, you just stay lukewarm. Now you know that if you expecting some cold water, 
And when you put it in your mouth, it look warm. And the bitterest water you eat. True or false? You're expecting the water to be cold, to be the nice and refreshing. Your mind doesn't detect that that's not the case. You get the water and you do like this. Are some people who say tea have to drink hot, so me have to blow it. No, sir. And they give you the tea. And when you're ready not to take the tea, you do so. You even take your time. The tea is just... So now we understand what lukewarm means. It is something that we don't like. Some people like room temperature water. But it is at that time you know what you're getting. Are you with me? So Jesus says here, he's saying, look here. You know I prefer if you are on one side of the fence. If you're cold, we will know that you're cold so we can reach out to you and get you to a point where you get hot. Are you with me? If you're hot, we know that you're hot so we can support your ministry and ensure that you continue hot. When you're in a state of lukewarmness, we know we can. We'll find you. Which church is this? Which church? Can my church? Me hot. Can my church? Me not cool. Verse 17 says, They said they were rich. The history books will tell you that after the 1840s came the boom of materialism. In other words, People were more interested in things than actual people. And even when you think about our time today, the car and the house and the expensive suit sometimes takes precedence to even the needs of somebody else. We, we, we are caught up, we are in a time that we are preoccupied with attaining our educational achievements. The doctorates and the master's degrees and getting the first degrees and, and running our businesses and having the best homes at the expense of taking care of the needs of somebody else. I, I, I say this everywhere I go if I'm preaching a sermon like this just to emphasize the point. Think about the best suit of clothes that you have. The best, me say. Meaning that one don't wear regular. Meaning that one has so much sentimental attachment that the place that you put it in the house, you put it somewhere that not even fly can pitch on it. That that expensive one that you know come from where. I said, think, just think about that particular piece of garment. And if I said to you, Sabbath morning, take it out of the house, carry it down to the church, hang it up at the door, I say, anybody who wants it, take it. And even now, some people saying price a madman. And that is just a piece of clothes. So understand, and some of us cannot be blamed for the way how we have been socialized. Because this is how we have grown to learn how to live. Yes. You, you must try to attain things. And things are the most people must wait. You have to go. So as a result we have this posture of self-importance and independence. That we think that not even God can help with. So they say they're rich. Increase in goods. You, 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 you are intelligent and highly intellectual. You have been to the best schools. You have the best diplomas and, and degrees. Who is the elder to talk to you? Sometimes God bless us with some things we think we reach. This is what the ladies said. They said, we don't need nothing. We're rich. 
we increase in goods. I told you, the historical Laodiceans, when Rome offered to help, they said, no, we're good, we got this, we have with money. And some people believe that once you have your money and your car and your house and all these things that they tell you in school that you must try to achieve, that you have everything when I have news for you, you don't have none yet. The story is told of this Chinese billionaire. What kind of me? What kind of ear, me say? Billionaire. The Chinese billionaire died. The wife married to the chauffeur. To the what? The man who drives them around every day. Who, who, who naturally is a poor man. The man. Mar dies, the wife marries the chauffeur. The chauffeur now inherits everything that the man had. So the chauffeur says, I thought that I was working for the man. Is the man was working for me? estimated it is estimated that you're only going to use 15 to 20 percent of whatever wealth you acquire 15 in other words somebody else is going to use most of what you hold in on to so enough people did this church is a good place for illustration because the symmetry is right beside the church Many people, many bodies that are over there don't left enough things. Probably some cars that somehow we couldn't drive in when they were alive. And it's, it's a good thing that when they say people turn in grave is a false doctrine. Because any other that wasn't a false doctrine, every grave mash up. You're gonna die, you know nothing, everything that you're holding on to gone to somebody else. But you say you're increasing goods and you think you are somebody. Without Jesus, you're nothing at all. I told them last, about two weeks ago, I was at church. There is a, there is a commentary from Ellen White from in the 70s, Mar Maranatha, a brown book. And I remember the owner of that book used to live on the house. We, we, the house that we live in, there was a room that my, my grandparents rented. And the owner for the book lived in that room. So she was a, she was a, your car, she was a Ellen G. White junkie. In other words, everything LNG White, she had every book, she had everything. And if you, if you touch her books, I never say read the book. If you touch the book, Sister Pride, it comes like you cut the lady, like you stab her with a knife. She, 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 she's so precious. She don't want you to touch it. The lady dead got me out the book. using the same book to bring people to Jesus. Me have the book. You, 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 you think that you're increasing goods. You don't want nothing because you think you have everything. So God said, look upon you. In our language, God said, look upon you too. You did it talk about you, rich, increasing goods, and you don't even know. Say so you're wretched. <laughs> you're miserable. You're poor. Some of the richest people in this world now have no material things. 
But you see, when you have peace in Jesus, when you, <laughs> and the person it says you're wretched, you're poor, you're naked, are you blind? And, and, and when somebody is so consumed with what they have. You recognize that that person blind. Yes. But, 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 but as I always say, because my approach to church, even as a leader with sermons and how I approach church is this. Listen. The Seventh-day Adventist church already as an institution studies prophecy know what time it is. We already know what is to happen. We already know who, and when we say who now, in terms of the lifestyle that they live, who is going to get there. But even as members, sometimes we preach them, we know them, we understand them, but we now live the life that's going to get us there. So, so my approach to my church and my sermons, I want us to think about our personal situation. Am I doing what is to be done? Because watch this. It don't make sense. You pack up, come church every Sabbath. Watch this. You pass the man a drink rum. You, 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 you pass whoever I go dance and party because you come into Wednesday night and you come into Sunday night and you come every Sabbath not living the right life. You and the man end up same place. Might as well you go drink rum too. Because many of us, we come, we, 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 we envy the life out there, but we come for people to see us. It better you go on. Because you still going to end up same place. You have to make up your mind that whatever God requires of me, that is what I'm going to do because I got to get into God's kingdom. And let me give you a hint. It has nothing to do with what you know. It has all to do with how you live, how you take care of people, how you love, how you show people that you are a child of God. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love. So you stay there and bright. I have things. But you don't love nobody. Nowhere. So I could, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 says, well, Though I speak with the tongues of angels and I know all mysteries and I have power to interpret and I have tongues, but I have love, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to the poor, show that now we know, and I give my body to be burned because some of us would rather out of pride dead for people think that we are a good person, but inside of us we not change. Your, your body to be burned. He said it profit us nothing. He looks at the condition of the church. He says, you, you, you think you're good, but you're far from good. You think you're, you're, you're rich and you're, you're increasing good, but you're naked, you're poor, you're blind. You need help. Which church? Which period of time? It is the last church in, in history. It is the last period of the church in history. It is the same church that we are living in today. Let me quickly jump over to Isaiah 58. Now, as Bible students, and, and don't feel bad if, if you don't or haven't studied this yet. But the church knows this. After 1844, because our, our, our movement, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, really came to prominence or, or came about after this disappointment in 1844, yeah. where it was predicted that Jesus was coming but it later proved from the studies that Jesus was actually moving from one place in the heavenly sanctuary to the next. Daniel 8 verse 14, your elders will go through that with you. Now, where I'm getting at is that it was after this Seventh-day Seventh Adventist church was hinged, the development of the church was hinged on the fact that the Sabbath message was now revitalized. In other words, not that the Sabbath was dead, 
But because of the period that preceded the 1840s and the church, the, uh, the Catholic church that is, took charge of religion, so to speak, the Sabbath was hidden underneath, it was, it was swept underneath the carpet. Are you with me? So, so this movement which from which we derive our name because the, the seventh day means that we stand on the fourth commandment which says remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And the advent is really the second coming of Jesus. So we, we, we worship on the seventh day. We believe in all the commandments and we believe that all of them still binding. Hmm? And we believe that Jesus is coming again. That's what the name means. But the Sabbath message was a strange message to the world in the 1840s. So we find that the church, the, the, this movement of people in the last days were the persons who would bring, restore the message of the Sabbath. All right. That's my background for us to go to Isaiah 58. Let's go to verse 12. Verse 12 says, And they... That shall be of thee shall do what now? Build the what? Old waste places. Thou shalt what now? Raise up the what? Foundations of what? Many generations. And thou shalt be called the what now? Repairers of the breach, the restorer of parts to dwell in. Watch what you're going to repair now. Verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the what now? Sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable and shall honor him not doing thy own ways nor finding thy own pleasure nor speaking thy own words. The next verse tell us same thing that Revelation 3 verse 22 going to tell us but watch this. The Sabbath keepers restore the light of the Sabbath to the world. This is the church from the 1840s. The Laodicean church is the same church from the 1840s. The lukewarm church. So, so, so look at what is going to happen now. Going to happen now. Let us go now up to the top of Isaiah 58 and see all the people in there. The same people. Isaiah. Ball out. Cry aloud in English. Ball out in Patwa. Spear not. Shout. Lift up your voice. No watch, no face. No bother watch now. To anti Darinai church, you're afraid to talk. Or price sit down in the church, you know, or have you over the corner. Talk. That's what God said to Isaiah. You know? Show my people, the same people who are going to repair their transgression. Show the house of Jacob their sins. You seek me daily. Delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. And you forsook the ordinance of your God. They ask of me ordinances of justice. And they take delight in approaching God. Watch this now. Just stay with me. Verse 3. This is what the church people are saying to God. I church people are talking to God. No, no. God, we are for, we are fasted. But you know, see, you know, see we. God, you know, see, say we are fast. We come at church. We ball out. We are fast. You don't know, see we. We afflict with soul. You, you, you don't ever take. You don't ever come to it. Because, because as Second Timothy, don't move your Bible. I will go to that text. And I want you to write that down. 2 Timothy 3, verse 5 says, Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And let me tell you something. Mark it, you know, because some people preach this to think that it is about people out of the world at the same church that we're in right now. 2 Timothy 3. We don't have time to preach three sermons today. So check that passage. Timothy was in the church having problem with the old people. The old people said the pastor too young. The, the old people said when you are coming up preach and, and, and when we say old people we don't mean all only in age. But experienced church members and Timothy was afraid of the pastor. Timid and never want to make decisions. So Paul said to him let me tell you something. 
You know, see nothing yet in the last days, perilous time going to come in the church. So the lovers of themselves and lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God are having a form of godliness. See them lay on this and church. Yes. So Isaiah gives an example. When the people come to church, these people, they fast for a show. So they come and they ball like a funeral. And, and people come and look on them and say, Oh, that with a price, holy man. If why nobody in a righteous like him, look how he's sincere and he might bow to God. And, and you put on the show. Yes, but then they realize that God now look on them. Because when Samuel went to anoint the king, and Samuel take all of Jesse's son, and God said no, and none of them, and he said you now no more son, and he sent for David out of the bush, and when he bring him, and he said yes, him, and he said God, man look at the outward appearance, but God look at the heart. So when you come here. And, 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 and price look good to you. God know what going on inside a price heart. They say, God, you know, look, boy, we got you know, see, we dress up at a fast and we don't eat no food. God said, listen, in the day of your fast, when you are fast, you, you, you find pleasure and exact all the labors. What do you mean? You're hard. You're unfair. You're rough. You're not treat people good. People will work for you. And, and this suggests, because, because when you look at it, there are people who are well off because they're employing people. So you must say, when you, when you work and they work, you deal with them rough. You know, you know pay people what they deserve, but you run coming to church and they're fast and they say, like, God, you're not see me. Bible may talk, you know. Revelation say, E that had an ear to hear, make it hear. What the Spirit say to the churches. And that is why we have to, we have to emphasize that, that text because some people want to say that these messages left from the reverend. Mm -mm. It is for us today if you are. You don't have a ear. You don't have a ear. If you still have a ear, it applies to you. So, look, so watch verse 4 now, Isaiah 58. You fast for strife and debate. That's the fast right now. You, 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 you're coming at the church. Who know more than who? And, and, and when church go on and the held a try with the Bible class. But you, you know, say, you must know more than him. And you stand up and you challenge him. And the two are fight. And the members of the church who know, know nothing, they leave going home, say the two men of the church are quarrel. That's the people. That's how they come to church, come get in. Two men up at church are quarrel. We, we, we cannot humble ourselves to know that even if a person presenting and go wrong, there is a way to do it. Because you have to teach the truth in love, friend. So you come and you call him and you say, but hello. That, that quote, the way you give, you know, sounds all right. Hey, why you go on now and you call and they are you join one side. You say, Dairos, what don't you just say? So even if you are dealing with him rough, you know, you, you and him in a private, what don't you just say? Yes. How could you just say that? Dairos, show me where you read. Where you get it from? But look what the Bible say. Then you say, all right, Dairos, when they get the little break, go in back. Yes. And I'm telling the church, hey, listen, me didn't read something, but uh, this is supposed to be everything. Yes, Love! Yes. But no, you get up, hey, Father Harvey, no, 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 no. Yes. So, 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 so you're fasting, but it's a proving thing. You change your car today, me change mine tomorrow. You buy BMW, me buy Lexus. You buy Audi, me buy Tesla. You, you, you put on one room, you put on the next room. That's your fast for. God said, me not look for you. You could have bought till that kingdom come, me not see you. Oh, Lord. 
your, your smite with the fist of wickedness. Yes. Church people. Yes. You know, you know, you know. And, and, and I don't Listen, I don't know. But you know, you know, some people say church people are wickedness people. No, I don't know, I don't know. But, but no, listen. Hey. Some things, listen, I told some people, you know, that under, you, you live as civilites. If you don't move, last time me know you live as civilites. And, same thing. But until I live where she live. And, for a fact, I'm sure, we can't talk for she, that everybody will live where she live, no. So she has seven Adventists. Yes. Just, just follow what I'm saying. Yes. There are some people in the church that, you see anytime you say church, I go out, then can't go. And then find every spirit of prophecy, all the spirit of prophecy right now, right. If you say you can't come out of the church. Because, because if you ever go into their community, and I say, so that the man did that, Christian. So it, it, it's like someone we hide, come out of the house. Pass up at man in it. He say you strife with the fist of wickedness. God said verse 5. Because we need to close. This is not this fast. That I have chosen for a man to come and a bow like a funeral. And a, and a bow your head and a spread sackcloth and ashes. This is not the fast that I have chosen. Watch this now verse 6. It is to loose the bands of wickedness. That is what God's church is expecting to do. Let go of our wickedness. And let the oppressed go free and do the yoke. Can you imagine? Listen, you see church, and I, I'm telling you, you know, man, when, when you go out six days and work, it must be burdensome and problem and trial and tribulation. You see, when you come here upon a Sabbath morning, he said, come unto me, all you are weary and you're heavy laden, make me give you a rest. You think church, you think church a long face something? After what God do for you from sunset to this morning or last night, and you get a chance now to come thank God that you can walk coming to the church. You think church is a long face, depressing? No. The leper said, "I will see you." They will know you was there. Church must be a place that people will welcome. They say, when you go to the church, the people are just joyful and they take care of them. And on a long face, dead, dead in people come and it's like you come worse than hope. If people come to church and can't be lifted, can't get a, a ease from the tension, church not doing its work. Church must be a place where people know say if me not go at church, me dead. When me in a pandemic, me can't stay in my yard, stay in my yard. Me have to find some way online. Me have to go by the producer. Me can't stay in my house. Me need church. You hear me say me do? Me need church. See, I have the phone, the phone connect to the something at the van, and, and the van now believe that it now going to allow me to answer the phone. So once the phone rings two times, the phone answer. So me coming to church, my phone ring. Hello, Mr. Prince. Of what a problem? Church, where coming? Mr. Says, Sir, call this number, I'm going to church. Suppose so we never have church with God. Every day, so. <laughs> we say not today. Today, me and God do. Me have a lay down my burden. Amen. Amen. And 
not, and I'm telling you, you, know, you, you cannot allow because how oh, you see some other people and when you think about other people, you come and you don't enjoy, you don't get the blessing that God has in store for you. When you come to church, you come to Jesus, you don't come to nobody else. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Verse 7 says you must deal your bread to the hungry. Even when you come into church and Sabbath, we should have come to church with a whole heap of food. You go to the supermarket, you pick up an extra something. You're looking at the house, you say, what well, we can carry down at church? Carry all of the food, come people, they need it. Yes. Bring in the poor. You know, this is one of the hard scriptures for we read. If we bring in poor in our house. I just, my house. Eh? God, you don't say what time we live in. My house. Eh? It's a mean of full food. You don't see how people we kill and kill have my house. It's like sometimes I read the Bible. We don't want some text out of the Bible, you know. And I see in Bible, we, we champion for you know. And, and one thing why I remain a Seventh-day Adventist to this day is because the Seventh-day Adventist church believes everything what the Bible says. So the Bible says you must bring poor people to your house. No, sister, there, no, have no Lord. In your house, where you build up a civil rights or wherever you build it. And grill it up. And a peer bank feet. Yes, yes, well, you see how much justification you want now. If you say what kind of poor and what kind of house are you? <laughs> Scripture. I'm <laughs> Ella Paris. Study it again with them. We don't have the time now. <laughs> Study it again with them. And then it tells you that once these things start to happen, it's a change in your life. Your light shall break forth like morning. Your health, some of you who are sick, are truly too wicked. Some of you who are sick, are truly too terrible. Because God said, He wish above all things. That we must find you. So look what the things say now. If you start with leg of the wickedness, stop pint finger, start stop with the yoke and the bad living, He say Your health are going to spring forth speedily. You think medicine can help you? Are your mind of a change? Only Jesus. The Lord will guide you continually. And if you draw out your soul to the hungry and satisfy, your light will rise in obscurity and it come right down to the last two where we read. Then you're going to build up all waste places. Then you're going to repair the breach. Then you're going to show people God's Sabbath. So, so in order to be true representatives of God, we have to fix up with life first. You have to fix up the lifestyle how you live. Let's close the message. Can we finish? Time gone. Let's finish. Go back to Revelation 3. Let's finish. So Jesus said now, verse 18, we're closing, four verses to go. He says, listen, you see if I was you, Jesus said, may I go counsel you now. Yes. Now the, 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 the principle of counseling for counselors, or those who know anything about it, is that the counselor has to know something more about the situation than you. The counselor must have some knowledge. We're going to edify you where you never have. Right. Or the ability to help you to see something that you're missing. So when, when Jesus sent me a counselor, you know, it means that you're going to listen to some things where you never understand before. So Jesus said, come and my counselor. Because you, you, you look by yourself and you think you are something. But you, you want to fix up. So he says, um, I counsel you, buy of me gold, no? 
<laughs> you are rich? Buy of me gold that is tried in the fire that you may be rich. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You say you're rich, I increase in goods. Jesus say, hey, look here. You get up and say you work hard every morning. How did you get up this morning? Who wake you up? The scientists still not figure out that one yet. Oh, your eye open. And you get up. And who, you, who give you the intellect? Who allow your brain to function that you can pass exam? But you can't come to church because you have to do tests. And, 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 the, and, and even in the pandemic, they were, you, pre-pandemic, there were some persons who said, me half a guy works Saturday, no matter what, because the boss said this. But when pandemic locked down the place, what me can never go to work? Why you never go? Like how you have to go? God said, trust in the Lord, man, with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him. He will direct thy path, man. Hebrews 11 verse 6 said, but without faith it is impossible to please God and those who come to God must know that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When the world throw things at your run, come to Jesus. Don't run away from what God asks you. Stand up for Jesus. He's going to stand up for you. Abraham was in a place we studied that last week then we come into the baby story this week Abraham was in a place that he was comfortable until there where he was living him the rich have everything that he want but God said in order for me to work the blessing through you you have to get up and leave it move to a place that you don't even know where you're going and he said by faith in get up and move let me tell you something sometimes the blessing that God wants to give you requires that you have to left from the job where you love so much. Leave out of the community where you feel so you can't leave. Leave out of your comfort zone. So God can work on you. Because somehow we never going to know God till we end up in a tribulation. When everything nice there is no God. Come on, let me buy. Get gold. White raiment. He said, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white, white as snow. He said, Jesus crowns us. He, he, he said, who are these? These are they that have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. When the man went to the wedding feast and he said, how oh, you come and you don't have on the proper garment because he was not clothed with the righteousness of Christ. He's saying that once you're not clothed with Christ's righteousness, you're naked. Amen. And this, this is a naked bad. Naked plus tax. Once you're not clothed with Christ's righteousness. So he said, listen to me, man. You come, let me clothe you with my righteousness. That your nakedness not appear. And let me anoint your eye with spiritual eyesight. So you know you can open your eye and see that everything that God gives you is to use to serve him. So you drive the car and you come into church and you're late because you feel the Sabbath school and you see the man out of the road that come to church too and you can't stop. Stop and pick him up. People there at church can't start Sabbath school. I solve. We're so earthly minded we're not no use to heaven. I solve. Let's read these last three together. And I will sit. As many How much time you tell your children that? Look here, I have to, I have to tell you this, you know. And boy, I may have a true love you, make me a lick, you know, boy. And then, the, and, and mommy, where me can go? And me say, it's because I love you. Make I keep you out of certain things. So, I, so, so never, you sit down on a back there, and you tell me, who rebuke you like that? Who rebuke you? And then you look now and say, who love you like that? Nobody. Because as many, and, and, and I want you to get this now. It said now, be zealous therefore and repent. What that mean? Sometimes when you get rebuked, you drop in your shell with a little self-pity. The, the writer said, listen, when you get rebuked, turn up and take rebuke and repent. And tap with a self-pity and go, sulk up, sulk up. Yeah. What that mean? Yeah. 
We don't get talked to. Take your talk to and that job. Who will talk to me? Repent that you must know. That is what it means. Let's read the last three together. Behold, I stand at the wall and knock. If any man hear my voice, I want to open the door of your heart. I will what? Come in to him and what? We'll sup with him and what? He with me. Next verse. To him. That what? Do you want to overcome today? Come on, raise your hand if you want to overcome. What it said now, to him that overcome it, will I grant to do what now? Sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame, and I'm set down at the right hand of my father. He that had one here, to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches Amen Praise the Lord Church we just heard a word from the Lord, from the man of God. Let us turn our hymnals to hymn 604. We know not the hour. We'll sing, we'll stand.